understand that God is still working in a way that, that will defy the odds, that will defy the, the critics, that will defy the science, that will allow us to be what God has called us to be. We need to be the salt and light that Jesus Christ called us to be. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Is it then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor can it uh, get a light, a lamp, and put it under a basket, but a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Well, as we go through doing and being convinced and doing the things God's called us to do, he says those things will preserve those around us. It will cause others around us to seek out the kingdom of God. It will cause others around us to look to the light. Why? When you and I are the salt and light. Have you ever uh, seen horses? What do you give a horse to make them drink water? A bunch of water, right? You surround them with water and they're going to automatically drink, right? No, you give them a what? A salt block. They lick it, just like a little kid drinking pickle juice for some ungodly reason. And then they get what? Thirsty. You and I are supposed to be that time. Now, I don't necessarily want anybody licking on me. I, you know, get, this, get this appropriate. I kind of got touch issues. But when they rub against my life, I'm supposed to be salty. And it's supposed to leave them a little thirsty for something more. How do they rub against your life? It's not in the sanctuary. They're out there. We come here together to celebrate, to get built up, to learn things. But you want to see the real miracles? I asked, had someone ask me the other day, when are we going to see the miracles happen? I'll tell you when you're going to see the miracles happen. When you get out there and start living it. That's when the miracles really take off. This is a training ground. We will have miracles. We will pray for one another. We will see the lame walk and the blind healed. But we haven't yet to see, we have yet to scratch the surface of what God wants to do when we engage the world around us. That's when the world's going to shake and know that there is a God. And how will they do that? By rubbing up against your life when they bump into you at Kroger and bump back to you at Walmart and they go, that left me thirsty. What is it that you've got? And then it says we're to be the light, and it says something funny. No one puts a light under a bushel, except for Gideon. But other than that, no one puts a light under a bushel. Why? We're supposed to live our lives out in the open. Well, no, you know, I don't talk about religion or politics. Well, then you hadn't really understood Jesus very much. Jesus talked about kingdom. His life was the kingdom. Now, I don't know how much you've talked about politics. I don't read any about that. But he sure talked about his faith because he is faith. He sure talked about living in the kingdom because he is the kingdom. When we talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're not pointing to the cross. We're pointing to Jesus living in the kingdom. The cross is the way to get into the kingdom, but it's not the kingdom. It's the doorway to the kingdom. And we can't stay in the doorway and call ourselves in the kingdom. We walk into the kingdom and we begin to live like Jesus. He says when you do that, you're going to rub up against people and make them thirsty and you're gonna be so bright that people are gonna see a path that they've never seen before they're gonna say wow that Johnny Mallory is different he teaches different he looks a little like Wilson on Sunday mornings and he he causes us to to want to do things I see something different when he's around have you ever been around someone like that that when you talk to him you saw things a little differently things just clicked they're being the light brother David when I sit in his office and he'd share with me stuff and things would click, be in the light. When Dennis Powell and I would have uh, two and a half hour lunches, uh, we would talk and talk and things would start to click, the light. That's what we're supposed to be, not only to one another, but to the world. That when you're around, people go, I just see things differently with you. We're to be, we're to go, and finally, we're to do. Listen to what... What is it that we're called to do as we bring the rule of God into every circumstance? 
If we look at Galatians 6, 10, it says this. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of God. And this is what I want you to know when it comes to doing. We can be the change by using our skills, talents, experiences. We can be the change, but we must begin to do. And I'll say it this way. Do something, do anything, but for goodness sakes, do. Just do. Do something, do anything. Don't wait any longer. I don't know what I can do for the kingdom. Well, you're not going to figure it out being a bump on a log. What did Paul do? Paul said, I'm going to go to Trails. No, you're not. I'm going to go to Pergia. No, you're not. I'm going to go to Bethany. No, you're not. I'm going to go to Macedonia. Sure. But he was going. He was doing. There's something that we're called to do. When we go through our lives, and if we can take, if we just hit the rewind on our life, and went all the way back to last Monday. And we sat back and watched it. And Jesus said, I want to watch this with you. And you were watching your life together from last week. How many of you be going, Jesus, you might want to go get the popcorn. <laughs> Jesus, you sure you don't need to use the restroom? This part, this, you may not want to see this. Or you're like your little kids watch a scary movie. Jesus, cover your eyes. For goodness sake, cover your eyes. We go through, and I'm not talking about sin. Some of you are going, oh, Lord, he's reading my mail. I'm not talking about that. I don't think Jesus is nearly as upset about our sin. Now, you're going to have to go with me here because he covered that on the cross as he is our lack of seizing opportunities to spread his kingdom. I think that's what breaks the heart of God. I think when we mess up, he says, hey, I still love you. Come on, we can work that out. We'll train you better. We'll work with you. He doesn't give up on us. But I think when he sees, when he sends a broken soul on their, the, their hope, they're hanging on by a string, and, they, and God wants them to rub against someone in his kingdom, and he sees you and he puts you there, and when they rub against you, they don't, they don't get thirsty. Or, you do what I do. Someone's about to rub against me, and I fake them out. Like, man, I almost had a serve. <laughs> Woo, missed that one. Or, I say this, let your light so shine before men. Oh, don't look at me. I'm just human. You know, we'd like a parent. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. That's hogwash. Okay? Your kid's going to do what you do, not what you say. And just as in the kingdom, we've come up with all these elaborate excuses why we shouldn't be able to do. Because Jesus was God after all. We're not supposed to do. He was the doer. We're just... I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I said Wednesday night, please do me a favor. Don't refer to yourself as a sinner around me. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. It causes the hair on the back of my neck to stand up. I loathe that statement. Why? Because I want to refer to you the way God refers to you, not the way the Satan refers to you. The adversary refers to you as a sinner. He stands before the throne of God accusing you, the brethren, night and day. But the Father, when he spoke through the prophets and the apostles, referred to you as saints. Not based on your behavior, but based on the way he perceives you. God sees you as a saint. You're a saint learning not to sin. You're not a sinner learning to be a saint because that's impossible. I want you to grab that. It's impossible for a sinner to learn to be a saint. But it's possible for a saint to learn not to sin. And so God's training us. But we must begin to see ourselves the way Jesus saw himself. What did Jesus see himself as? He saw himself as fully human, son of man, but also the son of God. How do you see them as himself as the son of God? Because he was full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom and truth. The Bible tells me that you and I are the temples of the Holy Spirit. He calls us adopted. We are adopted. We're able to cry out, Abba, Father. We are co-heirs with Christ. We are sons and daughters of God. So we are basically in a position, though we were not without sin, He covered our sin. And now, not only did He cover our sin, He adopted us into His kingdom. So now we have sonship, or daughtership, and we have the new life filled with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus basically showed us how to live in his kingdom. He lived the kingdom life for us to show us it is possible in your skin to live a kingdom life. 
Will you go do it? He invited us in. That's the message of Scripture. I am with you. Will you be with me? Remember that? That's the message of Scripture. To live out the kingdom of God. God thinks more of you than you think of yourself. God wants more from you and more for you than you want for yourself. Right, Pastor Dan? That's three weeks in a row. You ought to be feeling good. What is it that keeps us from doing? I believe somewhere we forget our identity in Christ. I want to finish up with this. The Bible says in James 1.27 that pure and undefiled religion is what? Okay, we've got to start reading our Bibles more. That's not good. Pure and undefiled religion is what? That we take care of widows and orphans. That's James 1.27. Uh, you might want to read. What we'll do is we're, it, come out on Wednesday nights. We're going to talk about the Bible. That's going to help us. Uh, I talked about 20,000 acts of kindness. I share with you that there, this sanctuary holds easily over 1,000. There's about 700 of us right now. If we each do one act of kindness uh, a week, just one a week, in a year we cover 20,000 easily. Every person here, no, more, no other person added, just people here right now. We easily cover it in a year. And it looks like this. You take and you write down. Don't put your name. Don't really want to know what your name is. I just want to know what the kindness act was. Bought a cup of coffee for a stranger. Bought a chicken dinner for a stranger. Helped my neighbor with their lawn. Just write something on there. Staple it together. And we're going to put it around another loop. And we're going to put together 20,000 acts of kindness makes one mile of kindness. And we're going to measure out a mile of paper link kindness. So it becomes a visual reminder that we are called to do. I'm not interested in stealing anybody's gift for their blessing from heaven because your right hand knows what your left hand's doing. It's not supposed to. Or your left hand knows what your right hand's doing. That's not the idea. Don't have to put your name on it. But you know what it does? I believe as people come in, they begin to be inspired. And they may read on there and go, Oh, I could buy someone's dinner. I could drive through McDonald's and go ahead and pay for the meal behind mine. I could, I could, I could buy the groceries for the person behind me at Kroger. And when they ask, why did you do that? Just said, God loves you. Leave them wondering. Don't tell them because I'm doing 20,000 acts of kindness because we got this little sharp, bald-headed pastor, and he's crazy, and he's going to stand me up and ask me about it. Did I do it? We don't need that. God will take care of publicity. He doesn't need us. And you know what? I figured God's not into publicity because when Jesus came, he didn't even hire a publicist. I don't think he needs that. But I do believe we're calling it intentional acts of kindness. If you look in your notes, if you're looking, it is all caps, intentional. It won't be random. I want you to go out with this piece of paper in your hand. And I want you to go out with that piece of paper and I want you to be looking for opportunities. And that makes it intentional. You, will y'all help me pass these out? Uh, and we just spread. I'm going to tell you what, Thad, will you help pass them out? Just don't whistle while you do it, okay? Uh, <laughs> pass them out. As, as you take these, I want you to know you're taking these and it's your invitation to go, to be, and to do. It's your opportunity to say, I, I, sorry, I want to be a part of something bigger than myself. I want to multiply my efforts. See, this is a visual reminder, just like our tithe and offering, just like our spiritual gifts, that together we can do what we couldn't do by ourselves. There's no way I could touch 20,000 individual acts of kindness by myself unless that's all I wanted to do. I know me, my overload limit would get about six in a week. It's like I've been too nice already. But together, we can do it. God has called us to do this. I'm telling you, when we begin to do it, I don't, I don't care what people think because I know what they're going to see. They're going to see, wow, what is going on? You can just tell them, God loves you. Why are you doing this? Because God loves you. Where do you go to church? God loves you. God loves you. You know what? If, someone, if you buy someone's dinner and the Holy Spirit falls on them and they end up at North Orange Baptist Church for the rest of their lives, we're going to say, hallelujah. If they end up, I mean, it's not about community. 
It's about us doing what we're called to do so that God will do what he's been wanting to do. 20,000 acts of kindness. It starts this weekend by at, uh, our uh, act of kindness are into the city. Please make a, 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 an appointment to be there. As those things are passed around, when everybody has one, will you wave them in the air so I know? Some of you people that really are adventurous took two or three. Okay, are we getting close? It's like communion. Has everyone been served? Because I don't want to close the service until everybody's been served. Up at the top. Uh, let's give Donna Pageant a hand because Donna made all these available to you. Thank Donna for that. As we, as we go through this week and we walk through our day, as we look intentionally for opportunities, I want you to know that you're looking for places where the kingdom of God will rule. And I want you to grab this. The simplicity of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God ruled as simple as a coin in the mouth of a fish. The kingdom of God ruled when multitudes were fed on the side of the mountain. The kingdom ruled when Jesus taught. The kingdom ruled when Jesus walked through a crowd that wanted to persecute him and kill him. The kingdom ruled on Gugatha as he walked up to Calvary and he gave his life. The kingdom ruled when there was a blind man healed and a lame one walked. The kingdom ruled when Jesus sat around a campfire and said, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man does not. The kingdom will rule in orange when we buy a cup of coffee for a stranger. The kingdom will rule when we mow someone's lawn for them or fix and repair a window. The kingdom will rule when we speak into someone's marriage that's broken and give them hope. The kingdom will rule when someone's delivered from addiction because of either a prayer of deliverance or someone deciding that they're going to help someone by being their accountability partner for an extended period of time. The kingdom will rule whenever someone gets up out of a wheelchair in the middle of Walmart because the healing power of God showed up. The kingdom will rule when Lee Brown leaves the hospital cancer-free. The kingdom will rule. The mistake we cannot make is to narrowly define how the kingdom rules. That's the mistake we must never make. Never put God in a box. God was not designed for a box. In fact, God was not designed at all. God was, and He is, and forevermore will be. His kingdom will rule and reign. And as we partner with Him, as we bring heaven's rule onto earth, orange and the surrounding areas will see the greatest move of God we have ever seen. And we'll be a part of the greatest end times move where I believe he will look out and say, Father, can I go get my beautiful bride? She's spotless and without wrinkle. God bless you. Dan is going to finish out the service and invite the prayer partners up and do all that stuff I just forgot to do. God bless you, brother. <laughs>
Jesus, the power of your love has saved me. The power of your love has restored me. The power of your love never fails me. Love is all. pastor this morning has encouraged us to go and to do just a reminder this next Saturday we're going to get that opportunity the table is still set up out there for uh, into the city I encourage you to be a part of that next week you don't have to have any special gifts like you said just be you and God can use you to do that amen we are a blessed people this next week we get the opportunity to bless others and I think that's what community church is all about Father, I just speak a blessing over this congregation today. Lord, that we are a blessing to this community we call Orange, Texas, and the surrounding areas. That, Lord, that we are a blessing at our jobs, at our work, at our place of employment. That we are a blessing in our neighborhoods where we live. God, that we are a blessing wherever our feet trod this week. Because you've called us a blessed people. Your favor rests upon us. That we're children of the King. Thank you for that. As we go this week, may God bless and be with us. Amen? Jesus, Jesus said his words, go and sin no more. Let's do that this week. Amen?